Hello, I'm Christina. It has been about four months since I finished my internship in Germany by DAAD, Deutsche Akademische Austauschdien. And I thought it would be great for me to share my experience, some funny stories, and maybe some do's and don'ts based on my experience. The RISE program by DAAD, so RISE stands for Research Internship in science and engineering. I want to talk about my experience in my host institution, which is Forschungszentrum Ulysch. Forschungszentrum Ulysch means uh, research center Ulysch. I had an amazing experience there in terms of working experience and uh, I did research. I was working in the lab um, in my field because I'm a medical scientist, so I work in the lab and I also uh, observed and sort of assisted animal surgeries required for the, um, the project, which is traumatic brain injury. So the research center has many different institutes and mine was neuroscience and medicine. And there are other institutes and there was a tour of the institute that uh, my supervisor uh, recommended me to join. And I think it's also for other DAAD intern students. Um, so we basically visited other institutes. So they, they're working on like solar energy and um, other like nanotechnology. Like we visited the facilities that cost like a lot of money. Uh, but then it was so cool because it was my first time. Like I'm not in nanotechnology field or engineering field. and. We visited a clean room, yeah, and then had some chat about different projects and also biotechnology is another different institute. So that was a really good introduction for me. So some main experiences that I remember from work was that for our team in our institute, we go out for a walk after lunch during break um, because the whole Fokong Centrum Ulich is was basically built on top or in the middle of a, a mountain in a way. So there was a lake, one or two lakes, uh, it was huge and um, yeah, like a canteen in the center of the uh, um, institute. So I really did learn a lot and saw a lot. I would not go into detail, but it practiced my, you know, problem solving skill as well because so I will share one interesting or funny experience that I encountered. So I was working on this software uh, for image analysis called Cell Profiler. I'm sure if you are sort of in the field, you, you heard about it or you have um, done something with it. And there was one part I need to export the file into Excel so that I can further analyze. And it just kept saying um, symbols and basically like not encoding, not, in, not being encoded or something like that. And I probably spent like two, three hours or like a whole afternoon to try to solve this because it is only on my own laptop that I have this problem. Like on my supervisor or other people's laptop, there was no, not this problem. I asked different, you know, online Google, ChatGPT, and I, I solved it. And then it turns out that because my laptop is in English, the system is in English and, you know, the encoding system is in English and it cannot code special letters like the German letters U or and uh, O um, like you know those letters with two dots at the top then I have to make changes to add this language to my system for it to encode the data and then problem solved maybe now it seems like a small thing but at the time I was like why was why is this not working and then it turned out because of the letter so this is for me it's quite an interesting problem from you know, living in a different country. So next, I will talk a little bit about um, life in Ulysh, the town that I stayed. Um, so firstly, as I mentioned, it is basically a, a small town, but they build this research center. So a lot of things were developed because of this research center. So I went to work and, and I also sometimes go to gym. I also practice dancing, so that's my my great biggest hobby. So I think there are only two gyms or so in Ulysh and it's a, a small town and um, there were only two dance studios as well. However, it is indeed close to bigger cities like uh, Dusseldorf and Cologne if you want to visit. So another 
story about the weather um, because I was residing in the UK and I also visited Jersey Island before I went to Germany and somehow in my head I was like oh other towns in Europe I mean you know they're, they're gonna be warmer there will be gonna be more Sun it is true to some degree but when I arrived it was like the first of July and I only packed like mostly summer clothes and it was but it turned out really cold and I basically had a really bad cold the first few days like really bad and the first day I went to the research center to collect my ID it was like a long queue like 7 a.m. in the morning luckily I had a colleague who helped me but like 7 a.m. in the morning I didn't have enough clothes I was cold and I was queuing outside the uh, ID office for ages and all the new informations and, and it's my first time being there and that made my sickness like my illness worse yeah so the weather when I was there when I arrived in 1st of July or so it was kind of a little bit chill I, I wouldn't say cold but like lower temperature maybe 12 degree 15 or so but I was expecting a uh, like I don't know 25 or something um, during the, the time where I when I stay it was like the summer was like sometimes like 30 degree and sometimes like 13 degree like it would be like 30 degree for a week and 13 degree for another week I don't think I'm, I'm not sure if this is a typical weather but that was my experience I also want to talk about train delays because I heard about it before somewhere like in Germany there were like train delays not very good or, or something like that but I was like it can't be that bad right before I go but then delays and cancellations are common so I remember there was another intern and when I arrived then they already get used to it and then and then he said I'm done checking there's no point checking like if you check the timetable it's gonna be like delay or or cancellation so there's like he was like there's no point checking I just when you see a train going to there just like hop in or something um, yeah so it is common uh, I would say most of the time was, would be delay I think I got like the worst delay for me maybe like three hours or so but when I mentioned this to my colleagues at work and they were like, this is nothing. <laughs> so I don't know. Because of the delay and when you have to go from town to town and go back to Ulysses or go, go back to your home, you often have to at least have one uh, transfer in another station. In, for Ulysses, I have to go like, if I go to Cologne, Cologne I have to take train to Duren, another town, and then go to Ulysses and often the train from Cologne or Düsseldorf to Duren was delayed and the next train from Duren to Ullis runs only every hour so it happened to me that one time the first train delayed and it arrived about two minutes after the second train departed and then I had to wait one hour yeah but it's again it's just like my experience in Ullis yours might be different then also sometimes uh, it delays until two minutes before my second train and it happened a few times that when the train arrived at that station for the change for second train and there were a group of people waiting in front of the door to run yeah because there's only two minutes to change to the next train and we have to go down the platform sometimes and then go through go to the other side and go up again to catch the other train because there's only two minutes to do all of these and we were just like waiting for the door to open and then run buses in Ullis a lot of time they're also maybe 20 to half an hour like every uh, 20 minutes or half an hour it's not that frequent another sort of funny story mistake that I made was that from the research center to go back home I can take a bus and sometimes there was this bus that have the same number but they don't go to, to the same path. So let's say 245, I forget which, which one is the number. Okay, let's say bus 245, and there will be normal 245, and there will be another 245 that says, owner Ulish. So that means without Ulish. And a couple of times I was so worried that I would miss the bus, and I had to wait like a half an hour in the cold, so I just like jump on this bus number that I saw, 
And then I was like, oh no, where, where is like, where is this going? Like, it's not, it's in a while. It's, I can see only fields, no buildings, grass. And then it turns out that that was the bus that it says like 245, owner oh, no, Ulish. So it basically, every other stops were the same, except for Ulish, which is my town. So this happened twice, and then I have to get off in the next uh, stop in the middle of nowhere and wait for the next bus going back. Yeah. So traveling on the weekends, because um, a lot of us wanted to uh, travel over the weekends because for most of the interns from Canada and you know, America, and they're like going to another continent. I can understand. So. Uh, a lot of them they're like traveling to different country every weekend by train or by bu uh, by like flex bus or something they are like some cheap buses or coaches that you can take to different countries i didn't travel that much i only went to like romania or like because I, I i wanted to chill like i just want to you know my belief was that when i stay in another country i talk to the people there and i experience a life there and not just be a tourist but I can understand if I'm going to another continent that is a really far away, then I want to see different things. So you can definitely do that while you are in Germany. If you are one of the interns, you will be invited to this um, meeting for all the interns in Heidelberg. That is a meeting not just for the RISE program, but there's another um, RISE professional. That is for um, interns that work in companies and they are maybe like masters and both students. For the undergraduate RISE program, it's just at the time. So it's, it's basically like a, like a weekend and you arrive there and they put you in this hostel because there were like four, five or six girls living in a hostel room. I was told that it just give like a straight on summer camp vibe, which is true because you stay in a hostel and then eat at a canteen downstairs. If you are going to, you're going to this meeting from Berlin. Okay, the Herbert is like, like here and Berlin is like the other side of the country so I was told that it took them like six or seven hours to go to this meeting from Berlin. Get ready for that if you're going to Berlin. However, during those days there were guided tour of Heidelberg and um, also there were student presentations from so many different fields because I'm just biology field and there are other earth science uh, engineering, physics, I was like wow, like I didn't know, I mean sometimes I listen and I'm like oh I didn't know about this field at all and then sometimes I don't really understand but it's actually a good experience like to listen to so many uh, good quality presentations and to know about what other people are doing. Lastly I want to talk about some do's and don'ts based on my experience, it's not a lot it's just sometimes some, something that I notice. So firstly, be punctual. I'm pretty sure that you have heard about this before, that in Germany is like pretty on time. I would say overall it's true, but it's not like 100%, you know, we have to be 2.30 exactly like that. Just try not to be late. And the second thing is, I only know after I stay in Germany that um, on your last day of work, you bring cake. And one of my colleagues um, said that something like, if you didn't bring cake, you're, it's not your last day. <laughs> yeah, so bring cake. And the third thing is, I think it's very useful to know basic uh, German phrases, because in my town where I stay, Ulysch, is as I said, it's a small town and it got developed because of this research center, I believe. And sometimes when I call like the gym, like for example, like I, I ask like Sprachen Sie English? So do you speak English? And they're like nine. I only encountered this once, but it's true that in that town, it's not very um, common to know English. I mean, the local people uh, live in town, not the research of researchers, of course. And for things I don't recommend you doing, well, it's not really doing anything, but it just like I noticed Indeed, in, in Germany overall, people talk in a lower volume compared with maybe Canada, America in general. Because I stay in the UK, so I think it's, it's kind of okay. But I did notice that um, when other interns from uh, the States or Canada talk in a group, sometimes in, you know, in a group ch uh, discussion on train, it 
did come across like really loud. I think it's just because like other people are so quiet and then yeah, um, this is something that I noticed. Other than that, I don't think there are really other things that are very important for you to not do and just enjoy, uh, learn from the experiences and travel and see things and yeah, it was, it's such a great experience for me. It is about the fifth country that I, I have lived in and um, it will definitely open your eyes and gain life experiences.